uh, and we have, uh, you know, approaching 160 uh, folks on our Zoom call. So I think we're ready to uh, call this meeting to order. All right, terrific. Glad to do so. So this will we'll be calling the joint meetings of the uh, membership representatives and board of directors for the CalSAS consortium. We'll be calling that meeting, meeting to order. My chair just took a dive on me. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and jump into it. It looks like we're going to have, um, when I'll take a look at the agenda, we've got um, several action items that are for the JPA board, and then we'll have some action items split up for the mem membership representatives to take votes on. We'll also be doing our slates and our um, our uh, representative electives and going through the consent calendars. And we do have a smaller informational uh, slate for everybody than we usually have. So that'll be a good thing. Be able to keep to our two hour, our two hour time limit. We have some important guest uh, speakers as well that'll be joining us today. So um, aside of that, John, do you, we go through the protocols here? Yeah, I think we have to go through the public opportunity to speak on uh, on items. So yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know if we were going through the remain on mute stuff. I think people know by now, but uh, this I'll go ahead and open up at this point for a public opportunity to speak on anything that's not necessarily on the agenda. Okay. Hearing none, we'll go ahead and, and um, dive right in, John. Well, fantastic. Um, this is um, always uh, one of my favorite parts of our annual meeting is to uh, be able to have some dialogue with the executives from our three largest uh, vendors. We know that the success of CalSAWS and SAWS historically in California has been because of our public-private partnership. Um, I'm going to introduce the CEOs from each of our three largest vendors for CalSAWS. I'm going to do them one at a time. Uh, I'm going to start with Julie, then she's going to give her comments, and then I'm going to go on and introduce the other ones after Julie's comments. But um, it's really exciting to be able to know that, you know, CalSAWS is the largest integrated eligibility system definitely in the country and possibly in the, in the world. And we need first rate staff and vendors in order to accomplish the goals that we have and really to be able to serve our most populous state, California, and um, how we work through that and work together. And it's built on a history of success. Um, I'm happy to introduce once again, Julie Sweet. Many of you remember her from last year coming in and addressing the JPA membership. Uh, Julie is the chief executive officer and chair for Accenture. Um, again, Accenture is probably has the most scope of work for CalSAWS out of any of our vendors. They're responsible for maintenance, enhancements, uh, system integration support, uh, partnering on conversion, our call center technology, working with Highland as our vendor for, um, for our imaging solution. Um, I'm really happy that Julie was able to take time out of her busy schedule. Just to remind you, uh, not only is Julie the chair and chief executive officer of Accenture, she serves on the World's uh, Economic Forum Board of Trustees. Um, she also uh, is recognized as one of Fortune's most powerful women in business and Forbes 100 most powerful women in the world. And um, she definitely is a great partner. She always uh, makes sure that her executive team is available to me and um, I meet with them quite often. So uh, Julie, I'm just gonna leave it there and, uh, and look forward to your remarks. Great, well, thanks John. Thanks for that very warm introduction and thank you all for having me back today. I wanted to start with the expected and the unexpected. So a year ago when I came here uh, and I joined my colleagues from Deloitte and Gainwell and we talked about this past year, I expressed absolute confidence in our joint teams of Kelsa, Accenture, uh, Deloitte, Gainwell and our other partners. And I said, I absolutely believed 
that we would as one team execute and deliver on the critical work to support CalSAW's essential mission. And I'm really excited to be back a year later and our team, our one team, delivered on that expectation. And it has been an incredible year. I've stayed very close when you think about what we've done with Benefit Cal, what we've done with the um, Cal C4, what we've done with the cutover for Los Angeles County on the imaging system. This was hard, important work. And I really want to thank and congratulate the team. And it happened with amazing collaboration. And John, what you and Mike, Michael have set the tone of how you work with partners. Because you see us as real partners and we work with a lot of clients. You have set a best practice in terms of one team because we can say it all we want. But if, if you do not lead it, and John, the way you meet with us, the way you do, this is how we became one team. And I think it's just really been exceptional. And so it's so great that we have delivered on what we all said we would a year ago and expressed confidence. We also have the unexpected. None of us would have predicted what happened in the Ukraine and the effect that is happening, the very real effect on consumers and the most vulnerable in California when you think about what's happening with the energy prices, what's happening with food. And so a year later, we have the next phase, the 18 Cowan uh, counties to come over, lots of work, not just in bringing them over, but all the work on adoption and implementation at a time when the mission has never been more important, when we see what is happening on the ground every day, and the mission to support the most vulnerable Californians is absolutely critical. And so I just wanna take this opportunity today to not only express that same, even heightened confidence because of how we executed, to recommit to the collaboration and the hard work ahead because we absolutely must deliver. And I believe we will. And you have my personal commitment and the commitment of Gaurav, Arnold and the entire team and all of Accenture to bring what we need to bring and to work as one team with our colleagues and with the entire CalSAWS uh, team to deliver. And I'll just end by saying that, um, as I shared last year, I am a very proud Californian. I was born in Orange. I grew up in Tustin. I went to Claremont McKenna College. And as the Accenture Global CEO, I have over 7,000 people and growing in California. And we are incredibly proud of the work that we get to do with CalSAWS. And, uh, and I'm just incredibly proud that uh, we get to be a part. So thank you very much. Thank you, Julie. And thank you for your gracious uh, comments and for your team. We know that this next year is so vitally important. And again, uh, you said it well, working as one team to deliver, not only for our 40 production counties, but um, our future 18 counties as they make a really large transition. And it is going to take us all working to yet another level. And uh, we're confident that our one team strategy will be able to do that. And, and thank you for taking time. And I look forward to you coming back next year and reflecting on our successes yet again. If you will have me back, I will be here. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, uh, now we're gonna bring up uh, Dan Helfrich, who's uh, a Deloitte US uh, Chair and Chief Executive Officer. You'll remember last year, uh, Janet Foudy came in and uh, she was able to speak with us um, about Deloitte Consulting and uh, their delivery model for um, CalSAWS. Um, and as you'll know that uh, Deloitte has a very significant CalSAWS presence, has always had a very significant SAWS presence with us uh, for decades. 
Uh, it's been a, a, a great year. As Julie spoke about the delivery of Benefits Cal, they're responsible for the design development and implementation of that, as well as the ongoing enhancements. And this year coming into focus is the very important CalWIN implementation uh, support services uh, engagement that we're working across all of our 18 counties on right now. Dan is the chair and chief executive officer of Deloitte Consulting. And as the CEO, he uh, leads a team of more than 80,000 professionals across um, the uh, engagements uh, in the US. Uh, previously, Dan, he hails from uh, government and public services practices as he's uh, made his way into the uh, CEO role. And um, of course, has, is, 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 has many different uh, degrees and works through that. I thought it was interesting when I was reading this bio, and I'll read this to you. It says, he's also the voice of the 2019 NCAA Championship Georgetown University men's soccer team. So I thought it might be interesting that maybe he could give us a little uh, Cal Saws play-by-play here uh, and sort of work through that. Um, I had the good opportunity to uh, talk with uh, Dan, a, a couple of years ago, prior to the pandemic, and I'm uh, happy to uh, welcome him back. So, Dan, are you there? John, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Welcome. And yeah, it, I, I probably am the only CEO who uh, moonlights as a sports play-by-play -play announcer, but uh, it's been fun. And if you want me to carry the met metaphor forward, John, I would say. Um, Cal saws, if I think of soccer as a 90 minute game that has lots of twists and turns, um, Cal saws has that as well. And our focus is on making sure at the end of the day, it's a win. And we know that on the path to getting to that win, there's going to be twists and turns and complexities. And I certainly echo Julie's comments that the one team mentality to get there and the leadership that you and others are providing is an in incredibly important ingredient to that. Um, and by the way, when I think of one team and when, when Deloitte thinks of one team, we don't just think about it as the relationship between Deloitte and the state and Deloitte and the counties. We do think of it and the importance of the relationship that Deloitte has in the way we show up with the other vendors and contractors in the community. And you are relying on many of us to deliver great results for the counties and the people of California. And we owe it to you and to the citizens of the state to show up in a badgeless way in support of each other. And uh, we have done that and we'll continue to do that. Uh, my, my roots to California are also deep. I was born in uh, San Mateo County in the hospital in San Mateo. And ironically, Julie talked about her graduating from Claremont McKenna um, one of my daughters uh, attends Claremont McKenna today. So let, let, let's talk about where we've been and where we're going. So when we when we got engaged with and pursued both CalWIN and Benefits Cal over the last you know two and a half years, so many of our team was looking to come back home to where people started their careers in integrated eligibility in California, home to California. And because we have a team that is so um, focused on California and has roots that are so deep, this is about mission to transform the lives of Californians, people in their community, their neighbors. And that is central to how we think about which people we bring to the team. Now look, as I said earlier, there is complexity involved in bringing together all 58 counties to a single statewide system that will become, and it will, become the largest um, modernized eligibility and enrollment system in the entire country. And that's important. It's something to be proud of, and it's something we keep in mind every day. Uh, and as we talk about all the time, and I talk to my team all the time, when you do complex things like this and you face challenges, communication needs to be paramount, and you're going to have to at some time do the right thing versus the easy thing. And we face that so far, and we'll face it again in, in the expansion, John, that you described. Um, so let me, let me talk maybe a little bit about Benefits Cal specifically, and then uh, talk a little bit about uh, CalWIN. So, so Benefits Cal, here's, here's the way we view it. 
good working relationship to date uh, in bringing Benefits Cal live to 40 counties. And as we look forward to extending that over the next year and, and, and change to the rest of the state, we feel good. Now, together, what are we doing? We're supporting what we think of as an easier means for an individual to access services. And then it ought to be about increasing engagement between counties, between your customers, and the community-based organizations that are so central to this uh, system. 750,000 customers, 1,500 of those CBOs, they're benefiting from the feedback uh, of their peers and how the system was designed and implemented. And we do have upcoming releases that are going to further enhance engagement and drive increased usage of county services. So looking forward to continue to extend benefits Cal through the engagement of the newly formed collaboration work group that I was happy to hear was stood up and that I think will shape a continued bright future for benefits Cal. Cal win, probably a little more complicated and uh, no less committed to working with the consortium, with the counties, with our state partners, with advocacy organizations, with the County Welfare Directors Association, and with, as I said earlier, vendor partners that we compete with, but that we respect when we show up together, like Accenture, like Gainwell, um, and like Clear Best. Look, the, the scoreboard here for us is the successful migration of Cowan County to the CalSaw system, full stop. Okay, so I've done this for a quarter of a century, and migration is a huge change every time. And in this case, that's no different for the counties. We're hearing and we're feeling a fear of the unknown. And we believe it is our responsibility to be there to help as a guide, as a Sherpa, to navigate the unknown for the counties. That's the way we're going to get adoption. Uh, I feel good as I've checked in with the team on the activities that are forthcoming over the next month, early learning, the testing processes, and I think this will help further shed light on what um, all the stakeholders in this Calwin enterprise should feel and expect. And over time, that should create a greater degree of comfort with, with the change. But you know, I'll close with simply emphasizing the point that continuous dialogue, continuous feedback, and not being afraid of navigating the bumps in the road that are inevitable when you're trying to take on change of this magnitude, that's what um, all of us need to accomplish this together. And that's what you will get the commitment of from Team Deloitte to set the right tone and the right standard. So John, um, congratulations on the success so far, but more importantly, know that um, our entire great firm is focused on the outcomes that lie ahead. Thank you, Dan. I definitely appreciate that. It is definitely going to be a challenging, a challenging year, and um, we're going to continue to uh, work through that as one team. And I'm uh, happy to hear the the commitment from you and and your team as we as we progress and uh, we monitor um, how we iteratively reach that success together. Um, our last speaker is Paul Soleil. He is not a, a stranger to this group. He also was here uh, last year, uh, addressed um, our JPA membership. Gainwell has been also for decades um, a partner in SAWS and, and in our success. Uh, Gainwell is responsible for CalWIN maintenance and operations and eventually the closeout of CalWIN. They're also um, a partner in design, development, and implementation in key parts of CalSAWS, like data conversion for CalSAWS, our general assistance, general relief functionality for CalSAWS, and is our statewide CalSAWS uh, central print uh, services vendor. I have enjoyed uh, meeting with, with Paul um, a number of times over the last year to talk about gain well about their services, how they align with CalSAWS and work, 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 working together as one team. Um, Paul has um, a very rich background in technology and government services and corporate experience from DXC to Sprint to Nextel to Walt Disney International. And uh, Paul, I also want to uh, thank you and your team for partnering with us 
on our uh, Cal Saws Waves of Change video, uh, Don Wilder did a beautiful job working with our leadership team to sort of put together that uh, very strong message about change and how we work together to be able to do that. So, uh, Paul, I'll give the stage over to you. <clears throat> thank you, John, and uh, thank you also. Don did actually a great job, and so thank you for recognizing that, and thank you, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, and uh, let me begin by thanking the consortium for the opportunity to be part of the CalSAWS uh, team. Uh, Gainwell is honored to help you serve California's most vulnerable uh, citizen. Uh, we value the strong partnership we've had with all the counties, and some of those relationships uh, span more than 40 years. Now, your vision, your courage, and your bold leadership are game changers for millions of uh, vulnerable Californians. Like any journey, unexpected things happen along the way. Uh, collectively, and in particularly in your case, you've had to face major policy changes, wildfires, rising inflation, and all of us have been dealing with a shift in the labor market. You also had to lead during an unprecedented public health emergency due to the pandemic. And despite all these challenges, uh, what's very gratifying is that the CalSAS counties and your dedicated staffs demonstrated incredible, and I mean incredible resiliency. And while many would have turned back or changed course, uh, you never lost sight of your destination. And that is a testament to the collective power of 58. Now, Gainwell's relationship with CalSAWS is about two words, partnership and commitment. CalSAWS journey requires a partnership that includes the consortium, state and federal partners, the counties, and your vendor partners. And from the very beginning, we've been committed to collaborating with all stakeholders to realize CalSAWS mission to create a single statewide system and to work as one team. Your priorities are Gainwell's priorities and our team members serving CalSAWS are passionate about helping you deliver vital benefit to vulnerable Californians. First and foremost, we are committed to ensuring all 58 counties receive great service and delivery excellence. And I wanna congratulate the C4 counties that recently onboarded to CalSAWS. You should all be very, very proud. And to the 18 Calwin counties that will soon begin migrating, know that Gainwell will be by your side every step of the way before, during, and after the migration. That's our unwavering commitment to you. Equally important, we're focused on simplifying the CalWIN migration and providing assistance and information to ensure a seamless transition. And to support this effort, we're partnering with the consortium to enhance the help desk to assist with portal technical issues and improve the data conversion to CalSAWS. And finally, one of our most important priorities is to enable all the counties to send critical benefit related correspondence to their clients. And we're proud to enable this through CalSAW's central print operation. Now, once the CalSAW's migration project, project is completed, we will be sending more than 4 million benefit correspondence every month to clients. And we take this responsibility very, very seriously. And we know that every correspondence contains personal benefit information vital to their well being. Gainwell remains deeply committed to bringing innovative technology and business solutions to all the CalSAWS counties, from Central Print and the GAGR correspondence module to the help desk and vital field services. We know you expect Gainwell to deliver on our commitments so that you can deliver on yours. As I shared earlier, the CalSAWS team has always led with courage and compassion for the most vulnerable Californians. This vital work you do sets the gold standards for our nation and changes people's lives for the better. 
we are proud to be your partner on this journey and we appreciate the trust you placed in Gainwell. Thank you again. And now I'll turn it back to you, John. Thanks, Paul. Definitely appreciate uh, those gracious words and uh, the commitment uh, that we've had. It's gonna, as I've said, it's gonna be um, a challenging year and uh, we look forward to the year in front of us. And we do have um, a really good team that's been put together and um, we too are very impressed with our counties and our county staff and the way that they've uh, stepped up during these challenging times and have embraced this. So Michael, I think with this, um, I think you join me in thanking Paul, Julie, and Dan. And I think this is open for membership uh, questions. Um, I, I do wanna thank Julie, Dan, and, and Paul for being here and also recommitting. Uh, to our project. This is obviously incredibly important to all of us. Uh, the people we serve are um, some of the most vulnerable in our population and the services that we provide are sometimes uh, literally a lifeline. So the systems we depend on are critically important to us and the partners that we engage with are true partners, true teammates. And I think we mentioned a few different uh, team analogies in there and um, I've, I've been fortunate to be a member, member of a championship team, and I know what that takes. And it really does take commitment from all, all levels. And I know that the counties, we are, we are mustering up on the commitment we need for that championship push, that last, that last push that, that's required uh, to, get to, the, to get to the title. And we need that from you guys as well. Um, we are going to have uh, our points uh, through the remainder of this, this, challenge, uh, this challenging period where we're going to have to resource differently, where we're going to have to pivot, where we're going to have to make adjustments and make tough decisions. And we need to be able to do that collectively together and know that, we, that our partners are going to be doing the same. And I am confident, uh, based on our past experience with all of you, that you guys will be right there with us and that we will be one team getting us across that finish line. Um, and we will be asking a lot of you. I'm not, I'm not gonna pull punches. This, is, this, this period will be harder than any period before us. And um, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be worth it to, to all, of, all three of our main, main partners, our other partners that aren't necessarily speaking on this call. And it's definitely gonna be worth it to the counties for us to be able to um, achieve this tremendous milestone. Um, but it is gonna be a, a lot of work and we need to face that knowing that. Uh, so uh, be prepared. We're going to be uh, asking a lot of you, and we're going to be bringing a lot to the table from the county's perspective and our and our resourcing to make sure this partnership is 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 fully realized. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I want to turn thank it over you. to any other uh, board members that would like to uh, address the our, our our main partners here. You know, Mike, if I could, uh, Adam Dondra, the new director. Absolutely. Of the um, and I just you know, want to take the chance to echo the comments of the, the board members and to say on behalf of the state, you know, we're just proud to be standing shoulder to shoulder with all of you. And having been involved in a lot of complex, large scale projects during my career, those who haven't done this before, who've been really focused in the SAWS world here, just to know how refreshing it is for the three of you to take the time to be here to um, carry this message from the top down about one team, about working together. Um, really, um, it, you know, we'd like to say it happens on every project, but it, it doesn't always. And so it's refreshing, it's appreciated. And, you know, we're excited about this next year. Agree, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long one. We've got a lot going on, but having you all here to, to share this message and, bring that culture from the top down is appreciated. Thank, Thank you. you, Adam. And it's great to have you in the partnership circle as well now. Thank you, sir. I see um, Deborah Bates has her hand up and then Becky Emery also. Deborah. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, I just want to like sort of tack on a little bit to Michael's comments and how very appreciative we have been of, of the way the vendors have committed to working with each other. And, and that's important. Being a, a large Cowan County in wave three, I, I just wanna, I think we all knew going in that there would be a different level of complexity when it came time to convert the Cowan counties. 
And, and I think we're we're validating those assumptions, which is why we included change management support for um, this, the final phase of our full state conversion. I just wanna take a moment to really reinforce, cause Michael sort of said, you know, we, we have a lot of expectations for our vendors in this critical last phase. And, and as a Calwin County director, I just wanna, um, you know, clearly state that that is a true and accurate statement. And, it, and as, a, as our Calwin counties begin to convert, I just want to, my ask of our vendors is to really understand what that, what your commitment to working together means to us on the line and how important it is as our teams, as we're dedicating resources on the local front to really start planning operational impacts and identifying places where our business processes need to change and the more we the more information we get the better we are to make those decisions and not and to avoid the need to revisit some of those assumptions and so i just want to advocate very strongly for uh, things like um you know when when there's a functionality update to ensure change management understands the functionality update because they're getting a lot of functionality questions at the line level as we're trying to map out our two Bs and our as is is and trying to really identify um, the implementation impacts. And so, you know, you've all done a great job and I so appreciate the commitment, but I, I just, I just, I would be remiss if I don't clearly articulate the expectations of that ongoing commitment because the risk and what we can't have with such a quick implementation timeline is to make operational decisions with one set of understanding only to find out that that understanding isn't what it was and having to revisit some of those assumptions. We understand that you know systems change, enhancements get made, all of that. So it's really critical um, for us as Cowan counties to really be able to to really be able to understand where those interdependencies lie. And we ask patience of you because, uh, you know, as we start these details, uh, we're asking a lot of questions, we're asking a lot of whys, we're asking to see more information, but there's a reason we're doing that. And it's just because we're trying to make the best decisions with the information we have, um, because this is a big change for our staff. Um, with all the ancillary changes, as well as the system functionality changes, new workflows, new expectations on communication. So, so it's, it's a huge lift. And so I just need the, the leadership from, from our vendor partners to understand that Cowan counties have some really high expectation of what that support looks like and what your commitment to each other uh, and to us looks like. So, but, kudos for great work. I, I, I feel your level of commitment. Um, and so um, I know that this will, this, will, this will go forward very positively. There will be great conversions. There's always bumps in the road. My ask is let's keep it at the bump level and try to avoid some really major mountains, but great work, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. I uh, really appreciate those, those sentiments. Uh, I will go to Becky and then Marla after. I, I want to echo um, what the other um, JPA members have shared already, um, and certainly that this is a tremendous undertaking. Um, and one of the things that I really appreciate in each of our vendors is that you recognize that the focus of this is not so much on us or you, but on our community and the people we serve and those that we're working so diligently to make sure that they have the food securities, the stability, the funding, the things that they need to be able to just manage their day-to-day -day lives um, and be able to have healthy families. Uh, one of the other things, is, as Deborah said, is that you know we are going to stumble uh, or hit, hit um, small bumps. Um, I appreciate very much that all three of you have been extremely responsive throughout this huge trans, uh, transfer of services to a single system. Um, and that, you know, we have certainly hit bumps. We've hit um, some challenges in this. You've all been appro um, uh, approachable 
and um, really accepting of feedback and working with us and partnering with us. I, I have to say how much I really appreciate um, John and his team in coordinating those responses and efforts on our behalf, <laughs> um, but that each of you have heard those comments and that feedback and have come to the table consistently to work through those challenges with us. We know there's going to be more challenges as we continue to move forward, um, and that I would certainly ask and hope that that partnership and collaboration continues and enhances and grows even stronger as we move forward. Um, and as, as we're continuing to get this up and running, it's a tremendous tremendous um, outcome that we're all looking for and have really set the bar. And one of the things that I appreciate about this group is that not only do you set the bar, but then you achieve for the next level. And so thank you so much for all of your work, your partnership and collaboration. And we look forward to continuing that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Becky. Marla? Um, thank you, Michael. Um, good morning. I am Marla Stewart. I'm the Director of Employment and Eligibility Services in Contra Costa County. Um, and I also want to thank you, um, Julie, Dan, and Paul, for being here. It's really great um, that you uh, took the time to join us today. And it's so clear that you're very knowledgeable about this project, that you understand the importance of it and the challenges that we will face. And I appreciate your commitment to teamwork um, and to counties. And really, mostly, I appreciate how each of you clearly articulated that together as a team, our commitment is really to our communities. Um, and I want to thank you for that focus and I want to just encourage you to continue to work with us to maintain that focus. Um, you know, as counties and as part of our team, you, we serve the most impoverished members of our community. And I don't want us to forget this. I, I think for all of us who are on this meeting today, for all of us that work in this work in this area and that see, serve these uh, provide these services, I think it's hard for us to even understand how difficult it is to live in American society at a level of impoverishment that you have to be at to be, um, to be eligible for the services that we provide. Um, as a society, we do you know, decide that we want to provide a safety net, and the access to that safety net should be as easy as possible. And CalSAWS is a big component of that access to our safety net. Um, so I just want to thank you for your shared commitment in this area, your shared commitment to our communities, um, and your shared commitment to teaming with us and partnering with us, especially over this um, next year, Contra Costa County, we're a Cowan County as well. We are feeling some anxiety, but we're also very excited um, about how CalSAWS is going to actually improve our ability to be efficient and to spend more of our human focus turn towards our community instead of trying to figure out technological problems. So thanks for being here and thank you for your partnership. Thank you very much, Marla. Any other uh, board members would like to speak? Deborah, is your hand still just up from the first one? Okay. All right, well, um, hopefully uh, Dan, Paul and, and um, Julie, you guys can see the commitment level on our side. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> We're very confident that this is going to be a positive, uh, a positive outcome, but we do know that we're going to have to work to get there. And uh, we just want to be very upfront with you that, that we're going to be making a lot of asks in terms of partnership and assistance to make sure that the, these 18 counties that have not yet transitioned to this system have as smooth a transition as we can make it. And, and that the impact of the public is a positive impact and that we're mitigating uh, the bumps that we described that we are prepared for. So thank you very much for coming and speaking to us. All right, thank you. Thank you. And thank thanks you. for that feedback. It's great to hear from you all directly. Directly. So thank you. Thank you. John, are you uh, back on? Yep, I am here. Well, I'm right. here, Michael. Turn it back to you. Yeah, I think, um, and if there's any other uh, from the membership that wanna have any questions or things like that. We have a little bit of time and then Michael, I think we need to open it up to see if there's any uh, comments or questions from the public and then we can move on to our next agenda item. Absolutely. So the, the broader general membership, uh, any of the other directors have anything that they would like to, to say or address? Okay. Hearing none, um, how about any public comment um, on the um, speakers uh, and the dialogue that we just had? Uh, 
All right, hearing none, I think we, we know what work we have out in front of us. It's, our work is definitely cut out for us and we've got the right team to get this done. I'm confident. Thank you. All right, John, I guess we can proceed. Absolutely, thanks again. All right, moving on to our next um, action item. And this is just an action item for our JPA board. Every single month we have to go in and the board needs to authorize us to be able to continue our public facing meetings under the emergency um, orders of the governor that are still in effect as we go forward. Um, so we are looking to extend that for an additional month uh, through July for our JPA meeting, our project steering committee meeting and our WCDS CalWIN subcommittee as we go forward. Just a reminder, um, we always um, have a virtual setting for um, our meetings as we go forward. We think that during the pandemic, actually access has been almost easier uh, to our meetings. I think what this authorizes is that um, the place where the JPA board members actually come into the Zoom call may not have to be open to the public. Once the public health emergency is ended, then um, our JPA board members, as well as from our project facilities will have to be open and accessible to the public. We do have our project facilities open and available to the public, but directors right now uh, do not have to have that under the emergency orders that are still in full force and effect. And we will continue to monitor this. So Michael, this is open for board uh, comment question or uh, to move this item to continue to uh, work under the emergency orders for our public. Thank you, John. Any comments or questions from our board members or our state partners on this side? No, I would move that we um, continue forward in a remote setting according to the public. So moved, basically. <laughs> Just one more thing before we move it. Is there any public comment on the item? Okay, and was that Rachel? Yeah, that was Rachel, region right. two. I'll second it. I'm region three, I'll second. Okay. Sorry, I, you, you were already there. <laughs> nope, you can trump me on that one. <laughs> John, did we get them? Yes, we did. We got right. the, the move and second. Adam, do you have any comments on that? No. All right, Marla, do you approve? Yes. And Tracy, do you approve? Oh, Tracy's not on, I'm sorry. Uh, and Becky made the motion, Deborah Martinez? Yes. Very good, Chris Woods? Yes. Thank you, Gilbert Ramos? I uh, approve. Very good, Deborah Bates? Yes. Thank you, Melissa Livingston? Yes. Very good, Michael Sylvester. Yes. Very good, Roxana Molina. Yes. Thank you, Cynthia McCoy Miller. Cynthia. Okay, we'll try to catch uh, Cynthia later, but uh, it is so moved, Michael. Okay, and great. Bring, brings us to our next item, which is um, a JPA membership representative action item. So this is the nomination in actually electing um, our JPA board as well as our project steering committee. The way that I wanna go through this is I want to give you a little bit of background on how the slate was created for both the JPA as well as the project steering committee. I wanna present the slate uh, to the membership for both the JPA as well as the project steering committee. Um, and, it, and then I will call for nominations from the floor. If there are additional nominations above and beyond the slate, then we will entertain those nominations from the floor. If there aren't any nominations from the floor uh, and the membership would like to move the slate, then um, I would recommend that both slates be approved and both slates be moved at the same time so we just have to do one roll call of the membership in order to move that. As you can see from um, this slide, go ahead. Oh, there I'm you are. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, I was on mute. I didn't start six. I, I voted yes on the last um, agenda item. Thank, item. You, thank you so much, Cynthia. We will make sure that that, that is documented. 
As you can see um, from the slide in front of you, this section that governs from our JPA agreement, um, the uh, nominations and the election process and how many representatives come from each one of our six CalSAWS regions. Um, as you may be aware that um, LA County is the only region and our largest county that appoints its uh, members to uh, the JPA board. The others, uh, we have had nomination meetings, whether those be via email or through um, a uh, virtual meeting to be able to create a slate for who will represent each one of the regions. Let's move on to the next slide. So for our CalSAWS Region 1, uh, the board member nom nominees are to continue as um, they currently are. Uh, for Mar Marla Stewart, Contra Costa County Director, and Tracy Belton, the San Benito County uh, Director as well. One of these things, when, I, when we go through these slides, I'm just so impressed with the depth of experience of our JPA board members and of our directors, and they bring so much to the table um, as you can see in, in these meetings and really hold us accountable. I always say that uh, the thing that's so special about CalSAWS is our governance process and making sure that the delivery of our systems and what we do technically is grounded in what's happening operationally in the counties. Next slide. Region two has uh, one, uh, one member they have nominated and Rachel Pena has um, agreed to continue as the Nevada County Director and representing region two on the JPA board. Next slide. Region three, we continue with Becky Emery from Mendocino County, the director uh, to con continue in her role in representing um, uh, the largest number of counties in uh, Region 3 out of any one of our regions. Next slide. Region 4, um, continuing with Chris Woods, San Joaquin County Director, and Deborah Martinez from Madera County, uh, continuing and representing Region 4 and participating on the JPA board. And Chris is from San Joaquin County. Next slide. Region 5, um, our Largest region when you look at the number of people served. Uh, on Tran from it is the chief deputy director in Orange County, Gilbert Ramos from San Bernardino County, and Sierra Sierra Baldwin from Riverside County, um, being the representatives for Region Five. And Region Six appointees: Roxana Molina, Michael Sylvester, Cynthia McCoy Miller, continuing as the appointees for the JPA board. I wanna mention one thing, as we went through the nomination process and created the slate, there was some questions from um, the various directors that says, who qualifies to serve on the JPA board? What is it? Uh, counties have different structures. We're looking at authority. Um, first of all, thank you for your patience. Thank you for creating the slate. One of the things that we're working through with our general counsel is some definitions so that we're consistent in, in uh, making sure that who can be nominated through what is the span of authority and control that they have within the particular county. So that's probably something that's gonna be coming to the January membership meeting to make sure that we have clarity on that and we do that consistently. Um, so as we uh, look to that, um, I also want to uh, present, and you can see the authority for creating a project uh, steering committee and uh, the nomination process. So from region one, Anna uh, Pineda uh, from San Francisco County coming on to the project steering committee, uh, Clarissa Simon continuing on the project steering committee for region one, from San Mateo County. Region two, Eduardo Emanero from Sacramento County, continuing on uh, the project steering committee. Uh, Rachel Ebel Elliott, continuing on our project steering committee. Uh, region four, having Cindy Utes from Kern County continue on, as well as Vienna Barnes from Tulare County, continuing on our project steering committee. And region five, Elaine Martinez from Ventura County, Deputy Director, Alberto Benuelos, 
from San Diego County, Assistant Director, continuing on the Project Steering Committee, and uh, Shalon Jones from Riverside County, making her way onto the Project Steering Committee. Let's go to the next slide. Region six appointees, LaShonda Diggs coming on uh, to serve on the Project Steering Committee, Winna Critchlow continuing on the Project Steering Committee, and representing uh, Department of Children and Family Services in Los Angeles County, Vicki Moore continuing on the Project Steering Committee. So this is your nomination slate. All of the nominees has accepted the nominations and the appointments to be able to serve on both the JPA board and the next slide is the Project Steering Committee. And Michael, I think at this point, we can open it up to see if there are um, any nominations from the floor. Hopefully there are none, but we'll see if there are some that we need to entertain. Okay, well, let's open that up then. Are there any other nominations that aren't mentioned from the floor? Okay, I'm hearing none. So with no nominations from the floor, Michael, I think that we're open for a motion. And if um, any of the membership would like to make a motion and then we receive a second, we could move both the J, approve the slate for the JPA board, the project steering committee, and then move those slates simultaneously through a single motion. Okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll um, submit the motion to approve. This is Ethan, I second. Very good, thank you, Ethan. So with that, Michael, I'll start doing the uh, roll call. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go um, by, by each one of the regions and who we believe that we do have on the Zoom call. Just ask you to come off mute and say yay or nay or yes or no, or however you want to do that. And then um, if we'll come back at the end. If I didn't call your name, I'll call for any other folks from this particular region that would like to put in a vote that are our director. And then we'll move on to the next um, region. So um, first off, Alameda. Yay. Andrea, thank you so much. Marla Contra Costa. Yay. Very good. Marin Carey is not here. Okay. Monterey, Lori. Yay. Thank you so much. And San Mateo, Ken. Yes. Thank you so much. Santa Clara, Angela. Yes. Thank you so much. Sonoma, Angela. Sonoma, Angela. Okay. Any others that are in attendance from Region 1 directors that are noted on this slide that did not put in a vote? Pardon me? All right, Napa, Jennifer, are you there? All right, let's move on to Region I 2. I am here from Napa. And you approve? I do, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Moving on to region two. Uh, Nevada, Rachel. Yes. Thank you. Placer, Greg. Yes. Very good. In Sacramento, Ethan uh, made a motion. Uh, Sierra, Vicki, do you approve? Yes. Thank you so much. Sutter, David. Yes. Thank you so much. Tuolumne, Rebecca? Yes. Thank you, Rebecca. And Jennifer from Yuba County? Yes. Thank you so much. Any, but, any other directors from Region 2 that I did not call that are on att in attendance? Thank you so much. Moving on to Region 3. Uh, Rennell uh, from Del Norte. Yes. Thank you. Bill from Glen County. Yes. Thanks, Bill. Connie from Humboldt. Yes. Thank you. Becky Mendocino. Yes. 
Thank you. Tom, Modoc. Yes. Thank you. Roxanne, Shasta. Yes. Fantastic. Any other directors that are in attendance from Region 3 that I did not call? Very good. Re moving on to Region 4. Kern County, Lido. Yes. Thank you. Wendy from Kings. Yes. Thank you. Deborah, Madeira. Yes. Thank you. Joseph, Mariposa. Yes. Thank you. Yvanya, Merced. Yes. Thank you. Chris, Joaquin. Yes. Very good. Any other directors that are in attendance that I did not call? From Region 4. Good morning. This is uh, Linda Duchesne. I am uh, in attendance for Sonia Begay. Very good. Thank you. All right, Region 5. Deborah? Yes. yes. Thank you. Sayori, Riverside? Yes. Thanks, Sayori. Gilbert, San Bernardino. Yay. Very good. Rick, San Diego. Yes. Thank you. Melissa, Ventura. Yes. Very good. Any other directors from Region 5 I did not call that are in attendance? Very good. Region 6, Michael, you made uh, the motion. Roxana? Yes. Very good. Cynthia? Yes. Very good. Thank you for sticking with me through that, uh, <laughs> through that roll call. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, Michael, um, this moves on to an informational item. And um, this is really just introducing the new um, OSI director who you already heard from today, Adam Drondro. <clears throat> He's the OSI director, as well as the agency information officer for the California Health and Human Services Agency. And he is going to serve as our ex officio JPA board member. And uh, we welcome Adam to the fold. Um, so. Um, I don't know, Adam, if you wanted to say a couple words. Uh, sure, thanks. I mean, happy to be here. I've been um, tied to uh, the SAWS and CalSAWS work in a variety of different ways, working with social services and my role with CalHHS as the agency chief information officer. So it's good to see some familiar faces um, and just excited to be here and be a part of this effort. And uh, otherwise, just to say, Thank you to everyone that we just went through for your service. Um, I know that this is different work um, and it takes a lot um, and a lot of commitment to be a part of it, to go through the ups and downs and work through it and help it be successful. So, uh, you know, an honor to be here alongside of you and appreciate the introduction, John. Thank you. Uh, and I want to thank Adam also. Um, we've had the chance to work together in the past. I think he's the perfect person for this, this spot and uh, it's going to be a great partner for us. So. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. So Michael, that uh, brings to conclusion that uh, informational item. I think it's open for uh, questions. Any questions, comments <laughs> from our, our board members? Our member representatives? I'll open it up to everybody. Okay, hearing none, any public comment? Nope, all right. Okay, we can move along. It's gonna be a swift meeting. <laughs> it is. Um, next one is just for the JPA board. <clears throat> and uh, pursuant to the JPA agreement, uh, the JPA board needs to um, create a slate and actually proceed to elect for the coming fiscal year, a chair and a vice chair. So Michael, I turn this over to you. Okay, so um, for I, I would like to at least nominate uh, as a vice chair um, Marla Stewart um, for the for the slate, and I'm willing to self nominate. I was going to say Michael, if I could, 
uh, I, I would like, love do to, I have to do that? <laughs> I was going to say, I would, I would love to nominate for our slate. Uh, Michael Sylvester is our chair and Marla Stewart is our vice chair. I would certainly second your nomination for vice chair. Uh, Michael, you've done a fantastic job in leading us. You're able to dedicate so much time to this. Um, you've worked with all of the partners and done a phenomenal job. I really appreciate your dedication to this effort and the, the collaboration in the consortia. And um, I think you'd be a fantastic chair if you're willing to take that again. And Marla, I look it's forward good. to working with you if you're willing to as the vice chair. I think you also would do a fantastic job with, as one of the Cowan counties coming in. This is Cynthia McCoy Miller from LA County and I echo wholeheartedly all the comments that you just made. Um, I love the counties and, and, and this is something I'm pretty passionate about. So yes, I will accept. <laughs> Thank you very much, Becky. Um, Marla? Yes, I um, feel deeply, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply interested in CalSAWS and the way that we serve our community. It's just an honor to be on this board and to participate with all of my colleagues here and I accept as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, uh, Michael and Marla. And last call for nominations. And hearing none, <laughs> we will uh, move to uh, the vote. We got uh, a, uh, a second and, and, and move that. So Marla, do you approve? Yes. Very good. Rachel, do you approve? Yes. Very good. Becky, you made the motion. Deborah Martinez? Yes. Thank you. Chris Woods? Yes. Sorry about Thank that. Thank you. No problem. Gilbert, do you approve? Yes. Very good. Deborah Bates? Big yes. <laughs> Thank you. Melissa Livingston? Yes. Thank you, Melissa. And Michael? Yes. Very good. Roxana? Yes. And Cynthia, I think you were part of the motion as well. Yes. Very good. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, so moved. So we have a chair, a vice chair, a board, a project steering committee. At the end of this meeting, we're gonna call a special meeting of the PSC and do a quick nomination of co-chairs for the PSC as well. All right, so that makes it official, Marla. We're locked in, we can't go anywhere. All right. <laughs> looking forward to the ride this year. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm, I'm looking forward to the partnership. Welcome. All right, um, this brings us to um, agenda item number nine, and I'd like to turn it over to Holly. Thanks, John. Um, so as we do every June, we do need to uh, bring to this group, bring to the board meeting for a vote on the JPA project budget. So this first slide just provides the references from our JPA agreement the bylaws, the MOU that specifies that the board must adopt an annual budget. And part of that is the uh, JPA administrative budget, which was already approved last January by this group. Um, the next slide goes into the categories that are included in this budget. So in addition to the JPA budget, we do include our baseline APDs for CalSAS and CalWIN. Uh, we did retire the Cal ACES APD this past year, so that's been removed for the upcoming year, of course. We also include county purchases for, and, and for CalWIN, we call those county directs or separate services. Um, and these are included because those transactions are processed through our JPA fiscal agent. Um, we include all of our premise items for the various policy changes that go above and beyond the baseline. And then the next slide provides those totals by funding source. And each premise item is listed separately along with our baseline budgets and our projections for county purchases and separate services. Now for premise items, we do combine Cal ACES and Cal WIN into single APDs now. So where applicable, those are inclusive of both systems. Um, we've aligned these numbers to the May revise. So some of these amounts are subject to change as the year progresses and as we finalize APDs uh, for the scope and costs that are applicable to CalSAS. In particular, um, the CFAP amount does include, we know that includes non-CalSAS funding, but we're going to be working with the state to delineate what of that is the CalSAS portion as we work through those details and do an actual APD. 
and updates do get applied throughout the year through uh, future board actions. So in total, um, it was 500, so yeah, 558 million for uh, your approval. And I'll turn it back to uh, John or Michael. Holly, just, to, just a, a question, just to clear up. I know we had some question about how print costs or some, there was some cost allocation at the county level that was a concern in a prior, in a prior JPA meeting. Is there, when we look at the budget here, is, is there something that, that speaks to that piece? Well, the print costs, the central print costs are included in the CalSAS budget, um, as well as we have that in our CalWIN budget for our 18 counties as well. Um, so I, I don't recall a particular question about those, but we do have central print costs covered included in the budgets. I may be misremembering, but it was, it was the way the county outlay came out that, that was having to be looked at. I didn't know if that actually got um, addressed in the, in the budget or not. John, do you recall when we brought that up? Um, I think we had a couple of blips where we were sitting there and we uh, had to be able to have the, the counties preload um, the, um, the mailing costs on that. I think we had a couple of um, incidents where counties needed to be reimbursed for some of the, the mailing uh, that um, we went and did. So that had to be reimbursed to the counties and reloaded. I know that we have gone through that process with the individual counties uh, when there was some uh, erroneous, uh, say, over-noticing that took place as a result of a system issue. Uh, that we went back and worked through and credited the counties for um, those mailing costs and that we worked through that. Okay, so that's so what not I read. Not a structural it, budget. It, it isn't a structural item. And that is what we work through with each one of the counties to be able to uh, load that uh, those mailing costs. Okay. Any questions or comments from our, our, our board members on this? It's our pot of money. <laughs> All right. Um, any public comment on this this item? All right. I do want to thank Holly for all of her work because uh, we wouldn't understand any of this without her. <laughs> she's she's been tremendous at being able to tease it out when I'm when I'm confused, and and I really appreciate that. So, um, without any other comments, uh, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve that. I'll second. This is Rachel Regency. Thank you, Rachel. Um, Adam, thank you, your staff, for uh, working so closely with us to be able to put these budgets through and work with, uh, with the uh, state departments and things like that. So thank you to you. Marla, you approve? Yes. Very good. Rachel made the motion. Becky, do you approve? Yes. Very good. Deborah Martinez? Yes. Chris Woods? Yes. Thank you. Gilbert? Yes. Thank you. Deborah Bates? Yes. Thank you. Melissa Livingston? Yes. Thank you, Melissa. Michael made the motion. Roxana? Yes. Thank you, Roxana. And Cynthia? Yes. Thank you so much. That moves us on to our consent calendar and we have approval of the minutes and we've seen uh, noted in chat by Marla, there was a correction that we will be making as we go forward um, to the minutes. Um, the action items that are in there, we will be giving the uh, new JPA board an update on those action items. None of them are due this month, but we'll be reviewing them during our July meeting. So those are the minutes. The rest of the um, items on the agenda are what's called a signature authorization form to be able to um, commit funds and sign off on funds to be spent from that budget you just approved as we go forward. Um, so we have those uh, in the name of the chair and the vice chair to be able to sign those off. Myself, I'm the executive director as well as the secretary to uh, the JPA board have, have uh, authorization for that. Um, Holly as our PMO director to be able to work through those. Going on to the next slide. 
We also have um, three section directors, um, Laura Chavez as our technical and operations director, uh, Tom Hartman as our procurement and common services director, and Diane Alexander as our WCDS uh, CalWIN executive director having authorization. These have to be signed with San Bernardino so that they know that there's appropriate signatures on the document committing uh, the JPA um, to those funds. And of course, they go through JPA board approval and make sure that there's approval. In addition, uh, Diana Alexander, who is um, the uh, assistant county administrator in San Bernardino, who is authorized within San Bernardino, if the auditor controller has any questions, needs a emergency signature, they will go to Diana to be able to work through those. So Michael, those are the items that we're bringing before the board for the consent calendar. Okay, uh, to our board members, any questions or comments on any of the items on the consent calendar? Okay, hearing none, any public comment on any of them? Okay, then um, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar as a whole? This is Deborah. I'll move the consent calendar as a whole. I'll second. Chris, oh. Chris, thank you. All right, very good. Marla, do you approve? Yes. Thank you. Rachel, do you approve? Yes. Very good. Becky? Yes. Very good. Deborah Martinez? Yes. Thank you. And Chris seconded it. Gilbert Ramos? Yes. Thank you, Gilbert. Deborah made the motion. Melissa Livingston? Yes. Thank you. Michael? Yes. Thank you. Roxana? Yes. And Cynthia? Yes. Very good. So moved. Michael, that brings us to our member representatives' informational items. And first up on agenda item 11, uh, Holly's coming back. Thanks, John. Yep. Uh, so this first slide just includes, again, references to the JPA agreement that call for an annual financial audit. Um, we do select an audit through a procurement process that is conducted by San Bernardino County. We are currently under contract with Ide Bailey, and we have one more audit round um, under that contract. Um, after the after this last completed year. Uh, the auditor does review the financial statements. They conduct field visits if necessary. They request artifacts and sample claims. They talk to staff. Um, they interview the board, board chair. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see a result of the, this, um, the annual audit for the period July 1st, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. There were no findings of non-compliance. All financials were presented fairly, so no recommendations were made. So once again, we had a very clean audit um, and those audit reports are posted to calsas.org under our um, About Us public information uh, financials page on uh, calsas.org. We also issued it via CIT if anybody needs a copy. And with that, I'll turn it back to Michael. Hey, Holly, just a couple other comments. So again, if any of the county auditor controllers feel like, hey, do we need to audit the JPA board? This is the, the full report is provided to you. So you can say they've already been audited and they can be able to use this as, as an audit to complete any um, obligations that they feel they have. The other item is um, Michael acknowledged as Holly went through the budget. And once again, here and her team, we have a fantastic PMO team, uh, Holly's staff, as well as the PMO teams from our vendors. This takes a lot of work, but this is the foundation. You got to keep your money straight in order to uh, go through and be able to execute competently on these things. And um, I think Holly, her PMO team, our vendor PMO teams for uh, being responsive because as you've seen, there's a lot of money flowing through this project and we need to make sure that we're handling it 
correctly and we're happy once again to have a clean audit finding. So we thank Holly and uh, her team and our vendor partners for uh, making that that commitment so we, we can uh, proceed effectively on that. So Michael, back to you. Absolutely, Holly's a, a consummate professional and, and really happy to have her still as part of our team. Hope to hang on to her for a long time. <laughs> Yeah, and um, John's John's absolutely correct. Uh, with projects of this large a budget, uh, we have got to have very good controls on our our dollars. We have to have very good visibility and transparency around how they're being spent and how they're being allocated. And all the directors out there know that that's one of the top priorities you have in running your departments. It's no different here uh, at the project. So thank you very much, Holly, for all your dedication and commitment. Uh, any any other comments or 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 um, Questions on that update from either our board members, representatives, state partners? Hearing none, any public comments? All right, great. Thank you, Holly, very much. So we move on to, it looks like, a procurement update. Is that next, John? Yep, and Tom's up. That is next. I do have a real update. We had planned on releasing the RFP on July 26th. And thanks to the uh, quick review and approval process with our state and federal partners, we're going to change that date to July 6th. We have two little tiny things to get done, but uh, that's our target date. This will be updated on the calsaws.org website, and we are not going to change any of the other dates. So that's the procurement update for today. And Thank you, Tom, federal and state partners. And and Tom, to be clear, we're moving it up to July 6th, but we're going to keep the response date by the vendor partners the same date. So the vendors are going to have more time with the procurement. Uh, we didn't shorten that time, even and it, even though we're getting it out early, we didn't shorten that time, correct? Correct. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for hitting on that one, John. <laughs> Pretty important. And thanks to Tom and his team for working through a very complex procurement and that we're excited to get out onto the street and get it in the hands of the vendors. And I appreciate Tom and his team also already having those requirements out in vendors' hands and incorporating vendor feedback into the requirements and the structure of the RFP and things like that. It's complex, but it really sets a a firm foundation for a successful and complex and very, very, very important procurement that we have that's ongoing. That's going to commence on July 6th. Yes, thank you, Tom. Appreciate you and your team and, and your guys' ability to continue to improve our procurement practices and processes. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Michael. So, Michael, I think we're open for questions, public comment on that, and then move on to our next agenda item. Yes, any, any questions, comments from our state partners, our, our board members or, or representatives? Okay, hearing none, any public comment? Okay, all right, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. All right, June and Wendy, you're up. Hello, everyone. Um, it's nice to see 160 plus of you <laughs> again. Um, we wanted to do a little bit of a debrief of our conference from last week. So we had, um, we have a little bit of a um, copy of the agenda here if you missed it, but we had 520 participants in, participants in the morning and 438 in the afternoon. We had, I think, over 700 um, registrations. So we don't know where that really fell out between the morning and the afternoon, but we were happy to get the uh, number of participants that we had. Um, in the next slides, um, Wendy's going to talk a little bit about um, some of the feedback that we have from our early surveys that went out. So, um, Wendy, you want to take over from here? Yeah, thank you, June. So yes, we actually had a great conference and we got a lot of good feedback at the end. At the end of our general session, we had a mentee survey. And at the end of each of our breakout sessions, we also uh, asked everyone from our morning and our afternoon sessions how, we, how they thought that it went and what we could do to improve. So this first slide really just focuses in on the general session. 
We had seven questions that we asked, as well as some open-ended questions at the end. But of those, uh, we had a score from, our scale was from one to five, strongly disagree to agree with these different questions. And overall, we ended up with an average of 4.4. Before uh, the first four questions, we, uh, we hit it with 4.6, which was, I am likely to recommend this event to a friend or colleague. Overall, I'm satisfied with the way the event turned out. I felt that the event was very organized and I felt the format of the delivery for the event was, was excellent. So we got 4.6s on those. For the next couple of questions, we received scores of 4.1, which was I was engaged all day and I felt the length of the event was just right. And finally, we received a 4.2 on, I felt that I received all the information I was seeking. So for, um, in the general session, it looked like we had a pretty good showing for our first uh, venture in doing it in this format. Next slide, please. For our breakout sessions, we had five questions that we asked as well as a few open-ended questions at the end as well. But overall, we had an average of 4.5 across all of our breakout sessions. Our questions were the breakout room experience was valuable. The presenters and panelists were knowledgeable and I learned something new. The topic coverage was interesting. Uh, joining the breakout room was easy and I was engaged throughout the session. So overall, across all six breakout sessions, morning and afternoon, um, these are the scores that we actually averaged uh, about 4.5. If you go to the next slide, we can show you how they broke out amongst the different types of breakout sessions. The same information, but just how they really fell to those particular breakout sessions. So you can see along the, the, the right side of the board, um, we, you know, which session, and if you attended some of those sessions, hopefully you had the same reaction to, uh, to what came back with our surveys as well. But we had nothing lower than 4.1 for session two, and four and five, I knocked out of the park with 4.7. So congrats to those guys. Um, next slide, please. And back to you, June. Yeah, thank you, Wendy. So, um, you know, as, as um, we may have mentioned, right, this is our first um, time doing our conference, number one, separate from the business meeting, and number two, as an official conference and virtually to add to that. So, um, we really appreciate the comments that we got. So, you know, we have a couple on the, what did you like best about, you know, they liked the breakout sessions. They appreciated the sharing of experience from different stakeholders. And I just want to take a minute now to say, thank you so much for all of the counties that participated in the conference as a panelist, as providing information back to other counties. Um, we had staff and directors and others that were a part of these sessions, and we really, really appreciate that collaboration. Um, they, you know, we had um, a, a comment that, um, you know, they, they really thought the, the information was great um, and that it was well put together. So we thank you for that. Where we can improve in the middle of your screen, um, more demos for Benefits Cal. Um, I think that is a point well taken, and I know people like to see how things work. So um, I think others seem to think that it could have been better if it was interactive. And I know that we all miss seeing each other and, um, you know, being in a big room together and being able to hang out and have, you know, some um, side interactions. Um, so we, we understand that comment as well. Um, and then hosting some conference rooms or places you know, where people can get together if they want to attend a virtual conference um, in a little bit of a hybrid with, with others that they, um, they can get together with. And then, then one item about highlighting how the smaller counties are adjusting. So we did ask at the very end, how would you like to attend the conference next time? And it was interesting that we had overwhelming um, virtual, right, over, over half, um, 32% for either and 15% would really like to be in person. So this is information that we really um, are taking into account when we're planning for next year. Um, this year with everything going on, it was, um, it was a fun experience to get everybody going and to put this on in the midst of you know, planning for UAT and training and the, and the migration waves and and just even our regular M&O um, activity. So we do appreciate everyone who um, contributed to the conference, whether it be our project staff, our vendor staff, 
or the counties. And we look forward to um, having an even better conference next year. So June, Wendy, I, I wanna express my appreciation. I think you did a wonderful job in coordinating this. And this is coming from someone who despises event planning. It's, it's my nemesis. Um, but you guys did you guys did such a nice job. I thought it, I thought it was very pragmatically driven and that helps uh, because we could keep things in time boxes that were that people can digest and they don't they don't uh, drift away too too quickly. And you can see in the scores on how people rated everything. It's pretty I mean when 4.1 or 4.2 is your lowest score, mm -hmm. I think we're doing something right there. And the takeaways on what we can do better are, pretty precision oriented. I think they're things that we could definitely deliver on. So this was, yeah, this was, I've been in a few virtual ones and this one was very well done. So thank you so much. I think you did it. You did the project uh, proud. You guys did a great job. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Michael. Any other comments or um, questions from our, our board members, member representatives, state partners? Michael, this is Deborah. I just want to echo what you said to really acknowledge the team. I think some of the feedback I got is they they really appreciated the breakout se sessions and being able to adjust mm -hmm. their schedules and uh, attending one topic in the morning and then something different. And because it was sort of that hybrid virtual, counties got to send more people. So there was more participation from each of, uh, at least from my county. And so they really appreciate that. So kudos to the team. It wasn't an easy thing to pull off, but you did a great job. Excellent. Thanks, Thank Jeffrey. You. Any other comments from any of our board members or member representative? Very well done, you guys. Very well done. Thank you. I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how you guys did it. <laughs> Thank you. It takes a village. Yeah. <laughs> I get nervous over a birthday party at my house. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come help you out next time, Michael. <laughs> All right, I knew who to call. Excellent. All right, uh, with uh, no other comments there, public comment. Was there any public comment? Because we did have uh, uh, participation from a lot of, lot of folks. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next presentation. Item. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, uh, June. You guys did a great job. All right, uh, let's go on to the next slide. And Michael, I think it's uh, really important, as I mentioned, um, part of uh, a very important part of our success is our governance process. And we know that for our directors and our deputy directors that participate in our governance process, that this isn't your day job. This is above and beyond and additive. And um, it, it, it takes a lot of work, but it's a really, really important work. And we want to acknowledge uh, those folks that are going to be rolling off both the project steering committee as well as our JPA. Uh, they've been just fantastic participants. Uh, Jesse Peran from Region One, we've seen her in the Waves of Change video. She isn't here uh, today. She is um, out of the country. She'll be returning, but she is not going to be returning to our project steering committee, but we know exactly where she is and we can call up Jesse and um, very much appreciate her. Luther Evans from Region 6, ever since we created CalSAWS, Luther has been just an important member of our project steering committee, working through that, just being a great collaborator and we appreciate Luther. Uh, Sandra Boland from uh, Riverside County has just been a fantastic add to our project steering committee, very engaged as we've gone through uh, Region 5, as well as James Lacurdo uh, from San Bernardino County, just a positive force uh, for accountability. James working very closely with us and um, we will miss them. We look forward to our new members coming on to our project steering committee. And again, building that base of people that have participated and new people coming on board. So we wanted to acknowledge that. On the next slide is our JPA board members, Melissa Livingston from Ventura County. <clears throat> Appreciate her as we've created Cal Saws. She's come on board, just been a great consistent member of our JPA board. Um, and she's still going to be in the county and preparing the county for migration, but we very much thank Melissa 
And Deborah, our vice chair, is not only rolling off the JPA board, but very soon she's going to be retiring. And I know that we all wish Deborah the best. And um, she is going to definitely be missed. And she has just been um, a force for positive change. And it has just been a pleasure to work with her. And we didn't want this meeting to pass without acknowledging all of the participants and specifically Deborah on her upcoming retirement that she's gonna be celebrating, that I think all of us are, are, are going to be missing her. And uh, I think we all feel compelled to do really, really good things uh, and uh, to be able to share that with her as uh, she's getting some time away uh, to relax. So Michael, I know you wanted to say a few words. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've had the opportunity to work with Deborah for a while now and she's just, a, she's just wonderful. I mean, she'll tell you like it is and that's exactly what I need <laughs> so that we could uh, you know, take steps forward. And um, I'm gonna really miss you. I think her professional experience her uh, judgment, everything has been really helpful throughout the project. I think having that, you know, that that uh, that Calwin lens that we can always apply, uh, no matter where we are in the project, to make sure we're thinking about Calwin, whether they're years and months out or just a, you know a few weeks away from something that's impacting them. She always made sure that that was front and center, and 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 a very balanced look too, always balancing and making sure that that she's looking at it from. Um, all the counties, a 58 county kind of look. And I think that's what makes her so successful up there at CWDA and also with her peers and um, has been a wonderful um, participant in addition uh, to, the, to the JPA uh, governance process. Um, so I, I do wanna uh, say fond farewell to Deborah and to wish her the best. And I am super jealous, <laughs> but one day I'll have to do my math a little better. And, and, and figure out how Deborah pulled that off. But um, uh, we're gonna miss you, Deborah. So thank you so much. Thank you all for the kind words. I'm gonna miss all of you. You've, this has been the most uh, rewarding experience to get the chance to work with all of you. You're gonna do great things. I'm looking forward to seeing the end results. And I'm really happy about finally retiring this picture because it's horrible. But that, <laughs> cause I'm, like, I'm like, wow, that was a long time ago. But anyway, um, I just Great want to haircut. wish you all the best. <laughs> and, and thank you for respecting my certain level of crankiness. I appreciate it all. But I've always been cranky with positive intentions. I'll just tell you that way. But you guys have been an amazing group. And I really thank you for your kind words. And Michael, I can help you do the math on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'll be calling you. In a couple of years, please. <laughs> That's right. Well, it depends how good her math is. <laughs> well, I'm so happy for you, Deborah. This is, you know, we've had a, we've had uh, some other folks reach this, and this is just a pivotal point. I mean, it really is that you left a legacy behind you, and now you can um, you can venture out and and do whatever you want when you want. That's a pretty cool thing. <laughs> good for you. Um, John, do we want to open up any other directors? Anybody else want to comment? And go? Yeah, I think it's open for, for comment. And then I think uh, we can close it out. And I think there's been a lot of nice things said in the chat. Yeah, I just, I'm looking over for, there. For all of our PSC members for that are outgoing, for our JPA members, both uh, Deborah and Melissa, thank you so much. Yeah, and, and definitely, Melissa, thank you too for your, your tenure and your, your leadership on the board. We appreciate that. I'm glad you're able to focus on some other things right now. We'll keep this going. All right. And I see Diana has her hand up as well as Becky. All right. Thank you, John. Um, just wanted to say a couple of words. I still feel like I'm new here. It's been maybe almost a year since I've come back into the HS world, but I have to say a few things. First to James Lacurto, you know, I, I really appreciate his service and you guys described him perfectly. Just a positive force, always positive, always thinking of how can we get to a yes. I just love that about James. I wanted to acknowledge him from San Bernardino County. Also, Jesse Peran, even though she's Marin or I forgot wherever she is, she used to work in San Bernardino County. So we own her no matter where she is. And I just, I love her. She is a friend of mine and we keep in touch all the time. And I just want to just to give accolades to her because wherever she goes, she's always excellent. And then finally to Deborah Bates, 
um, one of my newer buddies who I am crying because she's been mentoring me, you know, between Deborah, Antonia, Sayori, uh, Veronica, those are my girls and they're all leaving me. And so I had to say that publicly too, because I don't appreciate it at all, Deborah. But at the same time, I am so happy for you. And one of these days, I'll be following in your footsteps towards retirement. But for now, thank you, Deborah, so much, because you have been so good to me and such a source of information and even comfort. And I just appreciate everything you've done and who you are. And I just wanted to publicly acknowledge you. So thank you so much. Um, but let me just start with thank you so much to our PSC members that have served and are, are retiring, um, to our directors. Um, but I, I have to call out Deborah has been without a doubt one of those people that has led, has encouraged people to speak their voice, put their voice out there to advocate for their clients, their staff, their the things that we need um, at the right places. And Deborah, you have consistently supported the smaller counties as well. Um, not just <laughs> your own, but all of us and how we do better on every single subject, be it serving um, those that are homeless that we're working with, those that are trying to access um, benefits through these new systems. Um, everything that you have done has always been looking at it through the lens of how do you help make things better for everyone, not just one person or one group. And your advocacy and support has been a tremendous help to our community and our county and our state and all of the people here. And so thank you so much for all of your years. You've shared a wealth of your knowledge and experience and we will truly miss you and I will miss you as well. And Michael, I see that Lori has her hand up as well. Uh, thank you so much. And I, I guess I'm going to be a part of the choir. First, I just want to thank the whole project and also, um, you know, uh, our JPA uh, directors um, and particularly Deborah, I will say I'm going to join that choir because Deborah has brought a voice of reason. And I think that sometimes she thinks that she is a, a instigator or a, a rabble rouser, but I think that she's had the courage to say some things that other people may not have felt as assured to say. So I appreciate Deborah's voice and her advocacy throughout the whole um, county land. And, you know, as has been previously stated, she doesn't just advocate for larger counties like where she's coming from. She advocates for all the counties. And so I will say, Deborah, your voice will be truly, truly missed. Um, I think that this project is a huge success for California in terms of where we're moving. There are a lot of issues we still have to work through. Um, you know, everything in CalSAS has not been smooth and is still not smooth. But what I will say is that we are talking about those issues collaboratively. And, and a lot of that is because of Deborah's advocacy and others, but particularly I do want to call out Deborah um, for being a real leader here in this endeavor. So thank you, Deborah, and thanks to Project. Um, and I think it's exciting, scary too, but we'll continue to move forward. Well, as you can see, Deborah, you've left your mark on many and uh... You can walk away smiling. Thank you, everyone, again for the overly generous words. You're, you know, great way to make me cry on a <laughs> Thursday morning. But I'll miss you all. Oh, all right. Well, I think then that really does conclude this meeting. So thank you. Meeting adjourned. Everyone, have the rest of your day back. Take care. Bye now. Thanks, everybody. Be safe, everyone, and have a wonderful um, fourth weekend.